I heard one time about an old deacon. He was kind of uh, stuck up in his religion, I guess you would say. But he stepped into the children's classroom and he, he said, Children, why do people call me a Christian? Trying to make a point, I suppose. But one little boy raised his hand and he said, Because they don't know you? <laughs> well, not exactly the answer he was looking for, I'm sure. But here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, last time uh, in our series that we've been looking at here through this passage, we talked about the importance of having the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. In other words, doing what's pleasing to God when it's popular and when it's not. Uh, doing what's pleasing to God uh, in every circumstance, in every situation. Just do what's right. Do what honors God. And so we've been looking through this passage about uh, giving no offense in anything. That the ministry be not blamed, as Paul said in verse number 3. And verse 4, in all things, approving ourselves as the minister of God. And then he gives a list of things in different circumstances, how to maintain uh, our uh, our testimony for God and how we can, some ways we can do that by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering. He gives some, some keys here. And so last time, again, we mentioned there the armor of righteousness. And then verse 8, we go on. He says, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and by good report. We're going to take those two phrases together very quickly this morning. He says, by honor and dishonor. That word honor simply means glory or praise. And so when men praise you, when men pat you on the back, or when, when men revile you, the word dishonor there means infamy, <laughs> uh, living in infamy, all right? Uh, but so whether they, whether they praise you uh, or whether they dishonor you, uh, whether they speak evil of you. In fact, the very next phrase there, he says, evil report, good report. The word evil report, uh, phrase evil report means literally defamation. So even when they lie about you, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to obey God. We're supposed to continue uh, to preach uh, the truth of God with compassion to a lost and dying world. And so uh, whether it makes people feel good or whether it makes people... Uh, revile us, reject us. We're supposed to continue to do what God has called us to do. You know, everybody likes to be popular. Uh, nobody likes to be hated, I don't think, at least. Uh, we all want people to receive us. But Jesus told us that's not the reality. Jesus told his disciples, men are going to hate you for my name's sake. And uh, in, in, uh, in fact, in the book of Luke, uh, Jesus said, blessed are ye when men shall hate you and they shall separate you from their company. You'll be, you'll be uh, shunned. And shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. We'll come back to that phrase in just a moment. It's an important phrase for the Son of Man's sake. But he goes on, Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. In other words, when men revile you, when men hate you for your stand for Christ and for, for uh, uh, your proclamation uh, 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 of Christ, he says you're in good company. So they hated the prophets. Uh, so they hated the apostles. In fact, um, most all but one of the apostles put to death for their, for their faith, for their message. And so Jesus said, uh, just let it be known. Men are going to hate you. Men are going to revile you. But he says you ought to rejoice. You're in good company. Now I come back to that phrase where he says, for the son of man's sake, that's important. Let's make sure that if men reject us, uh, that, that if men revile us, it's for his sake, not for our sake. Not for our pride. Uh, we shouldn't boast that men hate us, okay? Uh, and, and make sure that we are not the cause of the problem, uh, of the rejection. Uh, I'm not talking about watering down the truth, but understand what I'm saying here. Uh, by our actions, by our attitudes, uh, by our rudeness sometimes, and I won't, I mean, you've probably met people like that, all right? Uh, but he says, let's make sure when we're hated that we're hated for his name's sake, not our sake. But then one more uh, verse, I want to read a couple of verses in 2 Timothy chapter 4, where uh, Paul writing to a young Timothy, but he says, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Are we not in those days? And we're not talking about the professing unbelievers, we're talking about professing believers here, but he says, they'll, they'll not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, they shall turn away from the truth and shall be turned on the, fa on the, on the fables. And so the truth is not always popular. The truth is not always warm and fuzzy, but whether it's in honor or dishonor, whether it's by evil report, men lie about us and revile us and despise us, or whether it's by good report, doesn't matter. He says, just be faithful. 
just obey me. Continue to minister for Christ's sake uh, in the name of God. And so uh, through, through good, through bad, through honor, through dishonor, evil report, uh, good report, whatever it is, he says we're to be faithful uh, in, in approving ourselves as the ministers of God. Well, have a good day. We'll see you back here Friday for another edition of Ministry Minutes.